A sample of 135 Subaru Outbacks was analyzed to find a regression equation relating the average predicted list price, y hat, for any given miles x on a car. y hat equals 24,478 minus 0.13x. Find a 95% confidence interval for the average list price of all cars that have 30,000 miles on them. So here's a quick uh, scatter plot of the data with miles on the car on the x-axis and the list price on the y-axis. I know you can't see those numbers very well, but the idea here is just to see this regression line. You've got this scatter plot and the line that goes through this trend. The confidence interval makes kind of a, you can think of it as a, as a band around, around this regression equation. So if you plug in a value of x, say right here, you'll get some output of y hat right there. But you've got some confidence interval. That is, it could be right on the line. That's, that's our best estimate. But, but actually, there is some confidence interval. So it could be way up here or, or way down here. So you've got that confidence interval for, for this particular given x, for example. So what is that confidence interval? How can we find that? Well, we say that the confidence interval is given by y hat, that's our predicted, plus or minus this whole bunch of stuff here. We've got this t value, and we'll find that for the 95% confidence interval, multiplied by the standard error of the estimate, s sub yx, multiplied by the square root of a lot of stuff, 1 over the sample size, n, plus the square of the difference of this x value, in our case it's going to be 30,000 uh, 30, miles, minus x bar, the mean of all of the x values, so square of that difference, over the sum of the squares of x. So all of the given x values, here would be our x values for the, the uh, miles here, minus the average of all of those x values squared. So the sum of all of those. And we're going to use Excel to help us in, in some of these. But we'll plug all these numbers in and then get this confidence interval. So let's build this bit by bit. y hat. y hat equals the 24,478 minus 0.13 multiplied by the 30,000. 30,000 miles is our x value in question. So y hat then gives us an estimate of about $20,000. Remember this is list price. $20,000, $20,578. That's our y hat. I'm going to plug it in right here. 20,578. From that we have plus or minus, and now I'm going to start plugging a bunch of stuff in. The T, T value for 95% confidence interval and N minus 2 degrees of freedom, that's 133. I'll write this down, N minus 2 degrees of freedom. That T value equals 1 0.978. So let's plug that in. 1.978 multiplied by the standard error of the estimate. Ah, Excel's got a little formula for that. The standard error, error of the estimate is found by this. I'm going to use the, the function key because it's a little bit easier to, to get all the, the data in and for you to see it. So I'm going to hit that insert function and the, the function name is is S-T-E-Y-X. So I'm just going to scroll down there to S-T-E-Y-X. Here it is, and it tells you, it returns the standard error of the predicted Y value for each X in a regression. Okay, what is the, the data that we want? Our Y values, I like to go down, and look at this, it's asking for the Ys first. We've got list price for the in the Ys, so as our Y data, so Take note of that. Don't do not do this in the reverse order, but do our Ys. So that's this column. 
I like to go down to the bottom, makes it a little bit faster, and then come up. I do not include the label on this. And then all of our X's, our X's from line 136. The first line is the label, so there are 135 data points. Okay, we've got our Y's, our X's, and then it just gives us a value. So our S Y S sub Y X is 2,321.5. So I'll write that in there right here. 2,321.5 multiplied by the square root of something large. That is 1 over 135. That's our sample size is 135. Plus x, that's our 30,000. Minus the average. I've taken the liberty of finding the average of all of the x values for you. And that average is 49,244. And what this is actually saying is that the farther you are away from the average on this x-axis, uh, the larger your confidence interval is going to be. And that's why I tried to draw this a little bit curved here, this confidence, uh, this band here. Okay, over some of the squares of the x. That's what I have written here, and that is some of the squares. Guess what? Excel has a function for that. And... I am just going to type this one in. Equals, it's kind of a funny one, D-E-V-S-Q. D-E-V-S-Q. Open up the parentheses, and then I'm going to choose all of the X values. So here we are. And this is for the sum of the squares of the X. Got all of that data, close the parentheses, and it spits out an answer for us. It's a very, very big number. So writing that in there, that is 1.45 times 10 to the 11th. So all of this together then gives us 20,578 plus or minus... $461. So that average price the would be 20,578. That's our our best guess for a list price of a car that has 30,000 miles on it. But uh, we've got some some margin of error you can think of it as. So you could say if a car has 30,000 miles on it, its list price should be somewhere between 20,000 one hundred seventeen dollars that's the twenty thousand five hundred seventy eight minus four hundred sixty one to somewhere around twenty one thousand thirty nine dollars so that's a confidence interval um, on the average list price of all cars that have thirty thousand miles on them